come to engineer simple. <clears throat> in this in this video, I'll talk about how to calculate the line to ground fault current. You know. Um, in preparation for the FE or PA exam. So let's assume we have we have a system that looks like this. So we have a so like 20 kV bus. We have a transformer. So like 138 kV. Bus, and we have a line. Then we have another bus, 138 kV. Then another transformer. Then a 12 kV bus. So Let's assume a line to ground fault occurred at this bus here. So line to ground fault. So line to ground fault. So The base in VA is 100 in VA. The positive sequence impedance or the equivalent positive sequence impedance is equal to the negative sequence impedance, which is 0 0.002 plus J 0 0.05 per unit. The zero sequence divided by positive sequence impedance is three. The zero sequence resistance to the positive sequence impedance ratio is point or zero point nine per unit. So the question is one, calculate or what is the positive sequence current on phase A? If we assume this is a line to ground fault on phase A. And two, what is the positive sequence of voltage so if i look at this system so a couple of things some you might be given some information that's really just distraction for instance this here i really do not need so this you, ju you will just scratch you would need that if you are calculating the effective grounding, you know, the ratio. But obviously, for calculating the fault current, you need the positive sequence impedance, which is given, negative sequence impedance, which is given, zero sequence impedance is given as a ratio. So you can calculate that. And let's assume the pre-fault voltage is 1.05 per unit. So really, that's all you need to calculate the fault current. So this is just a distraction. So one, it's always helpful to draw a circuit. So for the positive sequence, So I have Z1. In the negative sequence, there is no source. So the same as the positive sequence, except there is no source. The negative sequence or the zero sequence impedance network, 
the same as the positive sequence, except there's no source. So you just connect these here. So that's what it would look like. Obviously, we said this is 1.05 per unit. Let's call this Vn, input voltage. Then we know Z1 is equal to 0 0.002 plus J 0 0.05 per unit. Z2 is just equal to Z1 and Z0 is equal to 3Z1. <clears throat> so the current that would flow in the sequence network is I0, which is equal to I1, which is equal to I2. Zero sequence, positive sequence, negative sequence current are the same. And keep in mind, this is phase A, So, but I'm dropping that <clears throat> just for simplification. So I1 or I0 or I2 is equal to the voltage, pre-fault voltage, divided by the positive sequence plus the negative sequence plus the zero sequence impedance. So 1.05 per unit divided by so if you notice here, I have Z1 plus Z2, which is Z1, plus Z0, which is 3. So 3, 1, 5. Or if, to avoid confusion, so you have Z1 plus Z2 is the same as Z1. Z0 is 3 times Z1. So it's 1. 0 0.05 divided by 5 times Z1. So I1 is equal to 1.05 per unit divided by 5 times 0 0.002 plus J0.05 0 0 per unit. So if you carry out the calculation, and this impedance here, this is in rectangular form. So if you want it in polar form, you, you can write it as 0 0.0, 0 0.0504 with an angle of 87.7. So if you carry out that calculation, you get 4.1966 per unit. So I just calculated I1, which is I2, which is I0. So keep in mind, I1 means positive sequence current, negative sequence current zero sequence current. So I calculated 4.1966 per unit. If I want to convert it to amps, I need the base current. So I base is equal to base MVA. So MVA base divided by square root of three times KV line to line base basically. My MVA base, uh, it was stated at the beginning, it's 100 MVA divided by square root of 3. The fault happened, and again, it's always, there will always be some distraction. You see, you have 20 kV, 138 kV, 130 kV, and you have 12 kV. Which kV should I choose? basically where the fault occurred. It occurred at 138, so that's the voltage I need to use as my base. So 138 
kV and always watch out the units. So if you carry out the calculation because, well, MVA means 10 times to the power of 6, kV means 10 to the power of 3. So you have a factor of 1,000. So you want to be careful. It's better if you write the units like I did MVA, kV. That way, make sure you multiply by the right factors. So if you carry out the calculation, you get 418.38 amps. So that's the base. So if I go back, I1, I2, which is I0, is equal to the per unit, which is 4.1966 per unit, times the base MV, uh, amps, which is 400. 18.38 amps, which is 1,755.77 amps, or if you want to write it in Ka, 1.7557 Ka, or kiloamps basically. So it depends on what you're given in the exam, but that's how you calculate. So that's the <clears throat> the sequence current, but if you want the actual current that would flow in phase A, so phase A, the fault current would be three times I1 or I0 or I2, which is 3 times 17, 155.77 amps, which is 5. Point, let's see, which is 5.267 Ka. So this is the, the current that will flow in phase A. Now, we are asked to find the voltage across phase A. So if you go back to that VA, the, the positive sequence voltage, VA1, or just VA1, it would be here, and here would be the negative sequence voltage, and here would have the zero sequence voltage. So if you do KVL around this loop here, you will find the voltage, the positive sequence voltage. So Vn is equal to positive sequence impedance times the current, the positive sequence current plus the positive sequence voltage. So if you rearrange the positive sequence voltage is equal to prefold voltage minus positive sequence uh, impedance times positive sequence current. So it's 1.05 per unit minus the positive sequence impedance is 0 0.02 plus J 0, 0.0. 0, 0.5 times the current that I just calculated. Four point one nine six six with an angle of minus eighty seven point seven degrees. 
So if you carry out the calculation, you get the voltage, the positive sequence voltage is equal to 115.93 kV. So keep in mind, this is line to line. Or 66.93 kV line to neutral. So that's how you would perform this calculation if it's given in the FE or PE exam. Thank you. Have a great day.